Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Dave Etkin. Welcome to another Wednesday webinar. Uh, I'm Dave Etkin. I'm the director of the Louisville Small Business Development Center. We're part of 13 centers across the state of Kentucky um, as part of the Kentucky Small Business Development Center network. Um, so um, I have some great guests today. And um, just to make sure we, we don't have any other technical difficulties, um, if you just look at the bottom of your screen and pull your um, cursor down there, the toolbar will pop up. You'll see the chat feature there. If you wouldn't mind, just to make sure that you can hear us and you can see us good, um, just type your name in there and tell us where in the universe you're joining us from. It's always great to um, see where everybody joins from. So just to make sure we're working, everybody can see us. Okay, good. There's Debbie from Litchfield. Good to see you, Debbie. I'm glad you're out there. Thanks for joining me today. Kevin from Cincinnati. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks for joining. Uh, Lindsay from Louisville, my hometown. Good to see you. Uh, Jeff Jewell, I need to give you a call. I'll be calling you later on. <laughs> um, Crystal, Fleming County, Flemingsburg, Kentucky. Great, thanks for joining. Um, yeah, we get people from all over the world sometimes. It's really interesting to see um, see where people join from. So thanks for joining today. Um, you know, we hear about this a lot and, and I think it's very important. Um, we've had some issues and some clients that I've worked with here just recently with um, cyber criminals hacking their data. And it's been such a hard thing. Um, it's very expensive, very disrupting. It's hard on the, the owners, the employees, and the, and the customers. So um, I found a great resource in uh, Dan Kanabrowski and uh, ben, or Bill Warren from Warren Technologies. They are uh, um, some, some great cybersecurity experts. And I thought maybe we could uh, get them to share some of their expertise with us and um, let us uh, kind of dive in here. So as we go forward, always as always, uh, if you have any questions, uh, just put them in the chat or comments. Um, we'll all be you know watching the chat today, and um, we'll just pop in and ask those questions because this is this is really important. And cybersecurity is also very personal to you and your business. So if you have specific questions, don't hesitate to put them in the chat, and we'll make sure we get those asked uh, answered for you. So, um, Bill, Dan, welcome. Thank you. Good morning or afternoon. Thank you. Appreciate David. Yeah, so I'm just going to go ahead and hand it over to you guys. You just go ahead and share your screen and uh, let's dive into cybersecurity here and see what we can all do to make our networks a bit more secure. Well, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, to talk to your constituency and your audience about you know something that we obviously deal with on a daily basis. And uh, so, thank you for the the forum to continue to educate the the business public about the challenges that that relate to cybersecurity and frankly, the realities of, of what's happening in the cyber criminal world. Uh, I'm gonna throw a lot of statistics and information out there, some of which probably won't be very eye-opening, but I, I imagine some of which probably will be as well. So again, thank you for the forum to, to talk to your constituency. So as David, indicated. My name is Dan Kanabrowski. Uh, I've been working in the IT and cybersecurity world since uh, 2007. And, and sitting here with me is Bill, uh, Bill Warren, the president of our company. Uh, Warren Technology uh, was established, obviously, in 1993, as you can see, going on 30 years uh, of integrated solutions uh, infrastructure cabling for new buildings, network administration for IT. We do some telephony for our clients. We do some, uh, uh, some remote monitoring, do some physical security. In essence, now we're in the world where anything that touches the IT network of a company, uh, we have some impact on the administration of that. Um, our specialty is the SMB market. So again, working with the uh, Kentucky SBDC is kind of a natural fit for us. Um, the, the, what we've seen, and to kind of dive into this, over the last, I don't know, Bill, we think half a dozen years, more, more ramped up in the last two or three years, is just how impactful this issue of data security is becoming, um, how um, good 
the bad guys are getting at sabotaging business owners' networks and and and, and compromising the data that uh, that's embedded in those networks, how they're using it for financial gain, uh, both directly and indirectly. And we'll talk some about that as we as we get into this presentation. So first and foremost, uh, I think it's important to kind of you know go through some of the uh, the cyber crime statistics that we're seeing. Um, as we go into to Q3 of 2022, you know, every 30, as you can see, every 39 seconds, a computer now is being hacked or attacked by a cyber criminal. Um, 2,244 separate attacks on a daily basis. And the COVID-19 pandemic has only ramped up um, the efforts and the abilities uh, of cyber criminals to to get on a, a business's network. We're all working remotely. Uh, we're all you know remotely um, uh, networking into our to our home base, if you will. And that wide area network uh, only gives them more of a penetration point, a point of failure um, to to you know to access data that they can then turn around and use uh, for criminal purposes. So here's a good point, maybe for some interactive um, uh, uh, feedback. Uh, if you want to put something in the chat or you want to raise your hand to share, um, you guys are monitoring the chat, correct? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. You should be able to see everything too. So. Uh, okay. Great. I appreciate that. So, you know, a few, a few cyber criminal type Q and A. Uh, let me go back to the previous slide. If anybody has any, any, yeah, two billion is not a bad guess um, of the average or the, the the total cost of cyber crime um, in 2022. It's actually 3.86 billion with a B worldwide, according to uh, Veronis, which is one of the industry sources that kind of tracks these uh, these numbers. Uh, Six trillion is the number they're, they're saying going forward um, in financial impact. And the, the escalation only continues um, as it becomes more profitable for cyber criminals to, you know, to hack companies, sell their data, sabotage their data for ransomware, uh, whatever those things might be. The average cost of a ransomware attack this year is 133,000, and that is all encompassing from a from a one man shop to uh, to Microsoft. Uh, the average, you know, the average impact is 133,000 um, on businesses irrelevant of size. And again, the global average cost that we talked about 3.86 million, and that's according, or I'm sorry, three yeah, 3.86 million, and that's according to the IBM report that just came out within the last 30 days. Real numbers, hard numbers. So cybercrime evolution of which it's not <laughs> what you think about with a teenager in mom's basement, um, you know, hacking a computer system. For some of us are a little older, we remember uh, the movie War Games was it Matthew Broderick was in that movie, uh, how he was able to, to, you know, hack his school system to change his grades. Um, not, not really that anymore. It's, it's, it's become an industry unto itself. Uh, one of the things that we'll talk about with a new engagement or a new customer is that if, and this is still astonishing to me, but if, if cyber crime were a legitimate standalone industry, it would be the third largest GDP in the world. Okay, so U.S. economy, Chinese econ economy, and cybercrime, if it were legitimate, would be the third largest GDP worldwide. Still shocks me, but it's true. The U.S. clearly is the primary target for cyber criminal activity. Uh, you know, data is is the vulnerability. Data is the, is the goal. Um, because once they have data, they can use it for, uh, you know, for 
again, it comes back to monetary impact, right? They're going to use it to sell it on the dark web. They're going to ransomware you to try to get you to pay to get it back. Uh, but it all, all, all data has value, whether it be employee data, customer data, banking data, there's value to that. And there's a number of different ways it can be manipulated um, for financial gain. Why has it gotten so big? Because there's a lot of money to be made. The truth of the matter is that most of the cybercrime now comes from China and Russia. And these are government sponsored agents that are creating these bots to try to hack US businesses. So they have, you know, we talk about, if you, if you think about like a savings bond, right? That's backed by the full faith and credit of the US government. Well, that's what these, these agents have now in Russia and China is they have the full financial backing of Putin or of Red China to try to sabotage U.S. Uh, businesses to steal data and to compromise their, um, you know, their wherewithal. I personally believe that probably the next world war will be a data war uh, because it because it, it's so hard to defend. You know, the truth of the matter is is that whether you hire a war in technology. Um, to help secure your data and you have cybersecurity insurance, it's not a matter of if anymore, it's just a matter of when and how much it brings you to your knees, how, how much a, a, a sabotage of your digital environment impacts uh, you know, the business. Are you prepared? Do you have a cybersecurity disaster recovery plan uh, when, those, you know, when those criminals get in your network and how much data are they able to, to steal? I think the third point here, why should businesses care, uh, is pretty self-explanatory. But at the end of the day, and maybe this is kind of the overriding point to make, is if you are a C-level employee in a business or you own a small business, this is not an IT issue anymore for your technical uh, resources internally. This is about business continuity. This is about not being shut down in six months or a year like a lot of small businesses are because they've lost, lost access to their data and they can't afford to pay the ransomware or they can't get back up and operating. We have a customer here locally in the medical profession uh, who just brought in a new uh, uh, office administrator. Long story short is prior to this new employment, she worked at another uh, pediatric office and they were hacked. They were ransomware. And it was so impactful that they could not invoice, send out a bill to a customer for four months or six months, mm -hmm. for four months. So a third of a year, they weren't able to create cash flow. Now, I want you to think about the industry that you're in, the business that you're in. What would that mean if you couldn't collect a check or a payment? for four plus months. And really, you know, giving your customers 30 days to pay or 60 days to pay, you're talking about five or six months with no cash flow coming in. I know for us, that would bring us to our knees. But the point is, is that it, it's, it's not IT anymore. It's about protecting the legacy of your company. It's about protecting the future of your company. And it's about protecting the environment in which you operate on a daily basis. It's not an IT issue anymore. Um, it's, it's truly a, a, a global business continuity issue. So again, if, if I'm going to ask a few questions here, and if anybody cares to share their, their answers, I think it would uh, certainly help from an interactive standpoint on this presentation. Question number one, probably already know the answer. Which country as of right now has the highest average total cost of a data breach? U.S., right? We have the most valuable GDP. We have the most small and medium businesses. Therefore, we have the most valuable data for the international uh, cybercrime uh, industry. How much do you think it costs the average remote? Uh, how much? How much did the cost of remote working increase due to the COVID nineteen pandemic? On average, one hundred thirty seven thousand dollars. How much do you think cyber attack scams increased over one month during COVID-19 as a percentage? Any guesses? I'll chat back up here. 300%? 400, good guess. 
So cyber, cyber crime scams increased 400% during March of 2020 alone. So astronomical numbers, right? Number four, how, how much do you predict cybersecurity spending will cost businesses this calendar year, 2022? I'll give you a guess, it doesn't start with an M or a B. Jeez. So One trillion, One trillion dollars. Wow. So cybersecurity prevention, cybersecurity defenses, Companies will spend about a trillion dollars this calendar year to prevent, you know, cyber crime on their on their companies. So let's next question, and this get, re relates back to, you know, the, the the points of failure and the weaknesses um, of, of employees. How many cyber breaches do you think are caused by human error as a percentage of the whole? I'd say ninety-five percent. What's the number? 95%. On the nose. All right. 95% of cyber breaches are somebody clicking on a link in an email that they shouldn't have or not paying attention to uh, uh, where messages are coming from and then believing they're from a reliable source. But 95% of cyber breaches are, are caused by human error, internal employees, or, or a vendor, something along those lines, but, but you know, human error. And then the final question, and again, this gets back to the IBM report. What do you think cybercrime will cost worldwide in 2025? We already said it's a trillion, right? A trillion this year. What do you think it's going to cost in the next three calendar years when we get to 2025? Wow. Well, Jeff, good guess. Double that. <laughs> Two trillion. 10.5 trillion. 10 trillion, wow. Yeah, so 10.5 trillion is what it will cost. Yeah, right. Dang is right. Uh, 10.5 trillion is what IBM predicts uh, that cybercrime will cost worldwide. Will cost worldwide uh, in 2025. Big numbers, but but tangible numbers. So a little bit more about the history of hacking. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about the cyber threats uh, or cyber intrusions, some of the big ones that have been on the national news outlets. 2017, Target had a huge data breach where hackers gained access to their network through their HVAC system, which, oh, by the way, a lot of us manage appliances now through our, through our home network or through our work network, right? Um, their HVAC was compromised and the cyber criminals were able to infiltrate their point of sale and retrieve thousands of credit card payment uh, sources and personal information of hundreds of thousands of individuals who have the target red card. I don't know if y'all have those. We have the red card. I know we have one. We got the email about it being hacked. Um, but that was, that was one that was certainly front burner um, you know, for the, the national media outlets. Again, back to 2017, 147.9 million consumers were affected by Equifax. I'm sure most of the people on this webinar remember that one as well. It cost the company $4 billion with a B in damages uh, to um, remediate that hacking. 2018 Marriott, and God love Marriott because they just keep getting dinged and keep getting bad press. Uh, with their hackings, but they were infected with a huge cyber attack that affected uh, 500 million customers worldwide. They were breached again in 2020, then impacted 5.2 million guests. They were breached again just this year uh, with a similar uh, uh, a similar virus that infected their network. Uh, so they just seem to kind of not be able to get out from under the gun. But that you know, Marriott's certainly been a target. Um, we often refer to, you know, customers that get ransomware and pay it. Yeah, you got kind of if you if you fly, you have a frequent flyer card. Well, unfortunately for Marriott, they're on the frequent payer list uh, for for cyber criminals because uh, for whatever reason they have been able to shore up their um, you know their network and they keep coming back to them. Uh, 2020 Twitter, 
I use Twitter. A lot of people use Twitter. It's a common application. Uh, they had 130, 130 million accounts that were attacked, uh, including those of current and past US presidents. Um, that, that resulted in an average loss of $120, $121,000 per account. <clears throat> I'm sorry, $121,000 in Bitcoin uh, that was, you know, that was hacked and was sabotaged through, um, through 300 different transactions that were Twitter based. And of course, the largest uh, uh, known data breach was Yahoo, <clears throat> excuse me, that impacted 3 billion accounts. Um, and of course, you know, these are all big, massive, you know, Fortune 500 conglomerates who have the internal resources to fight the bad guys, right? To fight cybercrime, to be proactive, to try to stay out in front of the trends that are happening in, happening in the cyber criminal world. This doesn't get e even anywhere near the granular level of the companies that we work with who have 50 employees or 20 employees or 100 employees who don't have the internal resources uh, to fight cyber criminal, but it, you know, it doesn't really matter, right? That the data, be it on a on a on a Fortune 500 level or a you know a company that does five million in revenue, the data is valuable. And if they can find an infiltration point into your network, then there's then there's room there for financial gain. You know, something to be aware of as we talk about these big cyber hacks and the, the history of hacking is that. Cybercrime, the cost of which it continues to rise decade over decade. The average cost of ransomware rose 33% just from 2019 to 2020. And it'll continue to rise, you know, it rose into 2021 and it'll continue to rise into 2022. The threats are only getting worse. The cybercrime is only getting worse. And as more businesses and consumers are impacted, the worse it will get, right? It's it's kind of that, that, that. Uh, that graph that you see about, about returns on investment, right? The more data that's out there and the more we live in a digital world, both personally and in our businesses, the more opportunity it creates for criminals to, to sabotage our businesses and to, and to infiltrate our data networks and find ways for financial gain. So a couple additional breaches I just want to touch on real quick. I'm sure you remember some of these. January 22 of 2020, a customer support database holding 280 million Microsoft customer records was unprotected, unknowing to them, but was left unprotected according to Identity Force. February 2020, 10.6 million hotel guests at the MGM resorts had their personal information posted on a hacking forum, according to Identity Force. April 14th of 2020, half a million Zoom, ironically enough, half a million Zoom teleconference accounts were found for sale on the dark web. July 20th of 2020, uh, an unsecured server exposed sensitive data belonging to 60,000 customers on Ancestry.com. August of 2020, 20, 235 million Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube profiles were exposed belonging that were part of the now defunct social media data broker, Deep Social. On and on, November 2020, Mashable, 1.8, 5.2 million records of staff, users, employees, and subscribers was leaked by hackers. December 2020, an undisclosed number of users of the audio streaming service Spotify, and if you've got kids, I've got kids, a lot of them use Spotify, passwords were reset after being sabotaged due to software vulnerability. February 18th of last year, the California Department of Motor Vehicles, the DMV in California, alerted drivers that they had a data breach after a billing contractor, automated funds transfer services were hit, was hit by ransomware. So, you know, there is no particular industry this affects. It's industry agnostic. Um, you know, uh, you know, clearly financial services, uh, government agencies, things of that nature are targets. But really, the industry doesn't even matter anymore. It's just a matter of how you know how they can get to your data, and then either try to sell it back to you or sell it on the dark web. So we've identified the top five cyber threats to small and medium businesses that kind of you know, caters to this market and this presentation. Um, and again, from an educational perspective, you've probably heard some of these, uh, but we just want to go through exactly what you know, these the ransomware, spear phishing, social engineer, 
attacking database exposure and insider threats, what that really means to you as you're running your business. So first is ransomware. By definition, I'm sorry, let me get back to the first one here. By definition, ransomware is the malicious software, is malicious software designed to block access to a network until a sum of money is paid to regain control. By far the number one threat right now in the SMB market. So what happens here is you get an email uh, from a bad guy at 4 a.m. in the morning on a Sunday who says, hey, we've we've compromised your account. Uh, we've we've um, sabotaged your data, it's been encrypted, and we're not going to give it back to you till you pay us a quarter million in Bitcoin, half a million in Bitcoin, send a wire to this bank, whatever it might be. Um, now, th th there's a number of problems with this, but the first thing is the immediate financial impact and the, the what do I do moment if you don't have a plan in place and you don't have a backup and you, haven't, you don't have a disaster recovery plan disaster recovery plan like we suggest for all of our customers where you can just say you know heck with you i've already got my data stored over here it's firewalled i can get to it i can go buy half a dozen laptops at best buy and we can be up and operating again in 12 hours most companies don't think that strategically and don't have that foresight so trying to think of this i mean it's kind of like a guy robbing your house and he steals a lot of your mementos or your, or your family pictures or whatever it might be. He says, you know what, I'll sell these back to you, but you got to meet me at the IGA and give me, you know, $5,000 in cash. It's kind of what's going on here. Probably not the most trustworthy source to do business with, um, which is why you really need to think about having a disaster recovery plan if in fact you do get ransomware. But the point is, is that from, from last year to this year, we've seen more than a double in ransomware attacks because it's low hanging fruit, right? We work with the FBI, the cybersecurity unit of the FBI quite a bit. You know, their stance on this, they have an unofficial stance to not pay the ransom um, because frankly, it encourages more, more of that activity. And I love those guys, they're great. They have, a, they certainly have their agenda as it relates to you know, stopping cybercrime and prosecuting it when possible, but they don't run a business like you all do, right? Like we do. So if you think about it from a from a 30,000 foot perspective, if, if you don't have a plan in place to protect yourself and you've been ransomware and you have employees that you're accountable for and their families that rely on that paycheck that you're accountable for. And oh, by the way, customers that you do business with that pay you to provide a service or a product, it's really easy to take that position until all of a sudden you can't run your business and you have enough money in the bank, hopefully, if they haven't already stolen it, to meet pay payroll for three pay cycles, six weeks, right? That becomes a, a, a real picture very quickly um, if you become ransomware. So maybe, maybe, you know, maybe you do decide to pay it and you just pray that that they're going to give your data back to you and unencrypted where you can go back to to normal activities i alluded to it before that doesn't often happen because if you pay a ransomware more often than not they're coming back to you they've got they've got something they'll embed in your network they'll give you the data back but maybe three months down the road or maybe six months down the road they'll kind of keep watching they'll embed something in your network where they can kind of watch the activity and see what's going on and and see how business is going. And they may come back and say, you know what? We're gonna hit you again. We didn't think 50,000 or 100,000 or a quarter million was enough. We've encrypted you again and we want you to pay us again. I mean, truly, I mean, truly it's a ransom attack. It just happens to be in data format. So, you know, a double from 20 to 2021, that'll double again this year. Don't know what'll happen going forward, but I do know that it's becoming um, you know, more of a concern for business owners and CFOs and risk mitigation people and, you know, general counsel in some of your companies or your outside legal counsel to try to kind of get arms around this and make sure that, you know, you're, you're what I allude to is wearing, a susp wearing suspenders and a belt, right? We can do, we can mitigate a lot of these risks 
Uh, we, we at Warren Technology can help you put in a lot of safeguards and a security stack uh, to keep this from being, to keep you as a business owner from being low hanging fruit. But we absolutely recommend that you have cyber insurance as well for, the, for just like you have car insurance or just like you have errors and emissions insurance for your business. You know, things do happen. Uh, there's no way to be 100% secure, but we do want to make sure that if there is some uh, uh, attack or you are ransomware and it was unpreventable, that, uh, you know, that you're going to recoup that investment or recoup that money uh, through cybersecurity insurance. And we can touch on that a little bit later if you all want to. Small and medium businesses are now the number one at-risk category for ransomware. Uh, Low-hanging fruit, right? we don't have the resources to fight it, to fight the bad guys that are government spo government sponsored. We don't have the, the, the smart IT guys that make a quarter million a year that sit down and do nothing, but, you know, try to try to ping the network and see if they can get in and, and um, are constantly working on protocols to, to protect data. And the bad guys have figured this out, right? It's, it's highly profitable to send out a million or a billion or, or, or half, you know, send out a, a, a number of bots every day just to ping the SMB market. They'll hit applications that you use on a daily basis to run your business. They'll hit your network directly. They'll hit your vendor's network that touches your network to see if there's some type of soft spot to get in. So the SMB market really isn't taking this as seriously as they should there's still a connotation of why is my value, why is my data valuable to cyber criminals? Uh, why would they want my data? I'm too small, you know, that they want Fortune 1000 companies. That's where the real dollars are. And that's just not the case. It's industry agnostic, small and medium businesses are low-hanging fruit. And they figured out that that it can be just as profitable to infiltrate a thousand SMBs as it is one you know, Fortune 1000 company. Uh, industry agnostic, but banking and financial services are clearly targets. Public utilities, uh, think about all the, the, the data that they store on their customers and all the power that they have, oh, no pun intended, but all the power that they have over how we run our, our homes and our businesses on a daily basis. Retail, think credit card payments. Uh, think uh, uh, employee information, social security numbers, payroll, IE target, and of course, healthcare. Uh, healthcare is, is still number one when it comes to the cost of remediation uh, of a cyber attack, specifically ransomware. One, because of HIPAA compliancy, and we found a lot of healthcare organizations aren't compliant there, but the medical records and, and, and all those things that are highly value, valuable to criminals to be sold uh, to the highest bidder. Uh, Colonial Pipeline, very public uh, 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 hacking that, that happened recently with oil production and oil transportation across uh, internationally. Uh, Apple, J look here locally, JBS Foods, I think it was 2021, uh, they went through a major uh, uh, hacking and, and had millions of dollars of impact on their operations. Kia Motors, the NBA, Shutterfly, and Baptist Health here locally as well. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try to speed this up a little bit out of respect for time. Uh, spear phishing, right? Spear phishing is a targeted attack most often on owners of companies um, or, or C-level executives where the bad guys send emails and when you look at that email, it looks real. It looks like it's from your boss or it's from your boss's boss. And it plays on the human emotion that we have, you know, trusting that we that we by default have, where we trust that it's from a legitimate sender in order to induce targeted individuals to reveal, you know, confidential information. Two thirds of criminal groups uh, use spear phishing to carry out cyber attacks. COVID-19 has only escalated this because we're communicating so much more uh, or so much less in person and so much more remotely where you know, email and, and, and Zoom and things of that nature are, are so much more commonplace than sitting in a room and having discussions around uh, uh, you know, business issues. 
most target most targeted industries here again it's industry agnostic but they go at after finance they go after e-commerce they go after trucking you know think about all the the issues that we've had in the supply chain recently uh, and how valuable trucking and transportation and rail is to our economy social media facebook uh, instagram things of that nature and healthcare you know they just kind of always have that monkey on their back are relevant of the um, of the, the the cyber criminal campaigns. I'll tell you a real quick story. Uh, I had a customer in the in the transportation industry out of Nashville, and I'd love to hear comments on this. But I had a, a customer, um, and yes, Debbie, I do have uh, data on nonprofits, and I can certainly get that to you um, offline after we get finished here. Had a customer who. We did uh, uh, network administration. So we're an MSP, right? Managed services provider. They outsourced their IT. However, they didn't have us do their, their cybersecurity and publicly traded. Again, cyber criminals are super smart and they, they look at the websites of the companies before they attack them. They look at the social media of key individuals within those companies before they craft their spear phishing campaigns. But literally, these guys, the bad guys found out when the board meeting was going to be uh, for this company, the next one, and they planned a whole spear phishing attack around it. So you've got CFO in the boardroom, you've got the board members, you've got the CEO, you've got the, the accounting people presenting their reports, HR, whatever it might be. So CEO is sitting in front of his laptop. Kind of picture this in your mind if you can. In the boardroom, CEO is, is sitting in front of his laptop, CFO, and the CFO gets an email he presumes is, by, from, is from his boss, the CEO. Things are busy, a lot of dialogue going on, probably didn't pay as much attention as he would if he was sitting in his office. But CFO gets an email, looks like it's from the CEO, said, hey, I know that the board, the, the board meeting is gonna run over, we're busy. I don't know if you remember, but I told you to get out that wire and the customer emailed me and said they haven't gotten it yet. So please make sure we get that invoice paid today. Um, I think it was a million one. Just go ahead and get that sent out so we can continue our, our board meeting and I don't have to keep it on my mind. So CFO is sitting across the table from his boss and kind of gives him the wink like, OK, boss, I got you. I'll make sure it gets done. CEO looks at him and, and doesn't really know what he's talking about because he never sent that email. But for sake of not, you know, not disrupting the apple cart in their meeting, kind of looks back at him as like, okay, no big deal. So CFO, highly, you know, a highly educated um, C-level employee in a publicly traded company wired out a million one, thinking that his boss instructed him to do that, who was literally across the table from him, and that money was never seen again. It hit about 13 bank accounts in a matter of an hour internationally, and it was a seven-figure loss. So. I mean, those are the kind of real examples and tangible examples that we're seeing on a daily basis, where if you don't have the protocols in place and you don't have a cybersecurity partner like us to work with that are happening and, it's, and then the money, you know, the money is real and it's tangible and, 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 you know, you won't see it again. The FBI has protocols that they use to what they call the international kill chain, but they won't even touch anything like that unless it's over $50,000. I don't know about you, but you know, I know to our operation, forty nine thousand nine ninety nine would be kind of impactful um, on our day to day operations. So the examples are tangible and they're real, and you know, they're 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 happening they're happening on a daily basis. Uh, social engineering, right? This so this is where is the act of exploiting human emotion. And we kind of talked about that with with spear phishing, but you know, to gain access to proprietary information and protected systems, relies on human interaction and readily available uh, online search information. So this is where it, it kind of ties into uh, to spear phishing, but rather than just trying to infiltrate your system, the attacks are on individuals um, and they're researched and they're targeted and, 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 you know, the emails are made to look really, really similar to ones that, that you would receive internally. I touched on human instinct of, of trust and curiosity um, often and these often come from a boss or a coworker, right? 
So similar to uh, to spearfishing, database exposure. I, I touched on a couple of these examples earlier, uh, but not having your data locked down or there being some soft spot or some application um, where the database is exposed. And believe me, they'll ping you a zillion times and they'll find it uh, if it's out there. Anything of value, right? Bank account numbers. I can't tell you the number of customers that we have that continue to store their bank account logins and passwords unprotected on their network. If they find it, you'll, you'll be attacked one day and your bank account for your business will be empty the next day. The money will be gone and you won't, your head will still be spinning before you before you figure out that you can't make payroll or you can't pay your invoices or you know whatever those those financial um, needs are. Social security numbers of employees, dates of birth, uh, healthcare information, uh, uh, health insurance, right? The health insurance uh, card numbers for your employees, all that stuff can be sold. Dark web is the number one forum for selling that information. Um, Applications I talked about, like if, again, I'll go back to the trucking exam example. If there's a specific fuel gauge application that most trucking company companies use to monitor uh, fuel use in their trucks, and there and there's a way that that they can infiltrate a company through that application, well, guess what the bad guys are going to do? They're going to go. They're going to find all the trucking companies that use that application, and they're going to hit your network through that application. Uh, at every trucking company that uses it until somebody figures out how they're getting in and shores up that that soft spot. Q1, this is just Q1, 91,000 plus company databases. Again, irrelevant of size or industry were uh, were exposed. 91,000 Q1. So extrapolate that out with the growth that we're seeing in in database exposure. It's it's a scary number. Uh, recent examples of the last year and a half, Yahoo, Twitch, Zoom, Nintendo, Pegasus, Airlines, big companies. Number five, and the last one that we'll talk about is uh, insider threats and, and weak passwords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven is still the most common password that people use, right? Yeah, uh, weak password that people use. And all that risk originates you know, from within the company, it's not an outsized threat. Um, employees, contractors, vendors, anybody that has access to your network, you know, through a login and a password can compromise, you know, the data network. 22% of all cyber incidents in the last calendar year uh, came from negligent insiders, and that was about a 50% increase from the prior year. Public administration, government accounts, finance banking, particularly higher risk for, for uh, insider threats and weak passwords, um, and 80%, 81% of hacking-related data breaches use stolen or compromised passwords without multi-factor authentication. And I'll just touch on this real quick, um, again, out of, out of uh, respect for everyone's time. If you're not using multi-factor authentication to access your network, it's the number one thing you can do to prevent your network from being compromised. You go to work, you sit down, you put in your password, you put in your, your user ID, you have your cell phone, right? You get a code to your cell phone that says, hey, put this code in on your computer at work to let us know that you're actually the one accessing the network. It, it's, it works for in-office employees, it works for remote employees, it works for anybody who accesses that network. And according to the FBI, that's what they preach. The number one thing you can do is use multi-factor authentication um, so that there's just one more step of, of protection so that no, so that the people who are accessing the network are the ones that are supposed to be accessing the network. It's, it's cumbersome, right? It's not convenient. Old school people don't wanna do that and I get it, but man, it's, it's certainly worth the investment of, of time and effort um, to not be sabotaged via ransomware or via or via a, a, a you know a database vulnerability, whatever it might be. So kind of to summarize here, you know, any business is vulnerable. We're vulnerable, you're vulnerable, the, the Kentucky SBDC is vulnerable. Any any company that, that stores data or has a digital footprint is vulnerable um, to a, a hacking. Employees are your most valuable asset, or maybe your second most valuable asset now with data being the first. 
but they're also the weakest link. They're also humans. We make errors. We have emotions. We, we are, you know, kind of like trust until proven otherwise. We tend to trust and we tend to, to believe that those emails come from a legitimate source unless your kind of spidey sense goes off and you believe that, hey, I got to be, you know, ultra, you know, um, critical of anything that comes in my inbox. But cybersecurity plans we find 99% of the time are not strong enough. There's very, you know, your firewall and your spamware just doesn't do the trick anymore um, because these threats are changing daily. They're, 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 they're ramping up daily. They're becoming smarter daily. It just doesn't protect you. Uh, and frankly, burying your head in your sand, and burying your head in the sand is not a cybersecurity plan. Um, and it will happen if you don't, uh, if you don't take steps to, uh, to protect yourself. One last thing I'll touch on, and I know we're close to, to 1245 here. We work very closely with the major cyber insurance carriers, which we recommend companies having. However, I can tell you from experience, and Bill will reiterate this, what used to be a two-page application two years ago now is about 13 pages or 15 pages because the cyber insurance carriers are tired of being a bank for grossly negligent companies that aren't protecting their data. So long story short, you know, insurance companies love to protect, love to collect premium, but we're all, in the, we're all in business to make money. But what they found is they had to put a caveat or stipulations in all their cyber policies that puts the onus back on their insured, you all, to protect your data and protect your network, right? So there's eight or 10 or 15 steps, depending on the carrier, that they require you to take, one of which is hiring a Warren Technologies to implement a cyber stack and to be a cyber partner around security, or they won't pay your claim. So in essence, if you're not doing the things that are required of you in that cyber policy, A, you should be doing it anyway, but B, they're going to come back to you and say, nope, you were grossly negligent. Here's the steps that we required you to take to keep your uh, your cyber policy in good standing and enforced, you didn't do that. So your half a million dollar claim, we kind of feel sorry for you. We're going to pay twenty five thousand, but we're not going going to make you whole on the loss that you incurred due to a cyber breach. That stuff's real, and I encourage you all, as you if you have cyber insurance, to sit down with your agent or sit down with us or sit down with somebody and go through those protocols because they are not paying anymore. They'll pay a small percentage <clears throat> if you don't if you can't prove that you've taken those steps to protect your network, but they simply don't want to be a bank uh, for gross negligent uh, insureds anymore. So real quick, strong passwords keep you safe. It's a piece of it. It's not all of it. Please use multi-factor authentication. Small and medium businesses aren't targeted. Absolutely false. You all are now the lowest hanging fruit and the easiest target for these international cyber criminals. Certain industries, absolutely not. Any industry is a target. Any silo is a target. Antivirus, anti-malware, -mal I'm good. Absolutely not. The threats are ramping up and changing every day. And it's simply, you know, that's not even a level of defense anymore. Cyber threats only come from the outside. They don't. It's both inside and outside um, moving forward. Cybersecurity is an IT issue. If you believe that, you'll be the one that calls us and says, hey, I need help. It's not an IT issue. Don't rely on your internal IT people to keep you safe. This is about your business being around in three years or being around in five years or being around in a decade so that you can pass it down to your kids. Because you know, daily we get these calls where people are on the edge of crying because I can't make payroll, right? I've got to lay off employees because I've been sabotaged and I was too embarrassed to report it or to do something about it. Can you help me now? And a lot of times, you know, we can help a little bit, but the damage is already done. Wi-Fi, public or private, it's not secure just through a password. I'll know if my computer's infected. It might sit there for six months. An infection might sit there for a year or two years until they kind of figure out your business operations. What Are you a seasonal business? When do you get the most influx of, of, of uh, invoice payments and cash? That's when they'll hit you. It won't necessarily be that you know right away. Personal devices, you bring that cell phone into work, you connect to your Wi-Fi at work, that doesn't need to be secured, right? But listen, it just touched your network 
it's a point of failure, it's an entry point uh, for cyber criminal activity. And finally, and I've touched on this, complete cybersecurity is achievable. It's not. It's not a matter of if anymore, it's a matter of when. You got to take the proactive steps. Uh, you got to stay in front of the criminals. You got to, you know, you got to have a warning technology. If you don't have the resources in house to to manage that kind of stuff and, and stay in front of the the, the the new threats and the changes, but it really isn't uh, achievable anymore uh, in 100 percent surety. And finally, I you know again, we encourage every company we work with, whether they hire us or not to have a disaster recovery plan, a written cybersecurity plan where you document if this, then this, right? The procedures that 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 um, encompass all employees, it doesn't matter what your title is or what your level uh, and the, counter ca the countermeasures that you're gonna take pr to protect your business from, from cyber criminal activity. Risk assessments, we require our customers to do them once a year minimum. Right, we won't even talk to a new customer anymore until they allow us to scan their network and to go through their data and find out what's embedded in their network already and, what, and what's been compromised. And you know, I again, I would encourage anyone to do that on an annual basis just to make sure that you're not as susceptible as you could otherwise be. Um, but we, we, you know, look, we love we we talk this stuff every day. We're passionate about it. Uh, we understand the threats that are out there uh, as it relates to, you know, small and medium businesses. And I'm going to take this off uh, screen share. Um, but I think if I can. Uh, you guys got me. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think if I can. Uh, and I can, I'm sorry, I can see the chat now as well. Um, I think if I can emphasize one thing is, you know, find somebody, find a partner, find somebody who can who can help you with your network, who can help you stay as secure as possible. Do not bury your head in the sand. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the nonprofit world, if you're in technology, if you're in finance, whatever. Like the problem is industry agnostic and an ounce of prevention truly is worth a pound of cure. And there's a lot of steps that the companies can take that don't cost a ton of money, but they're really effective, right? And like I said before, multi-factor authentication is the number one step you can take. So uh, Yolanda, I can see your question. Do you suggest a new company with less than five employees? Absolutely. It's not uber expensive, right? Um, yes, we do have a cybersecurity checklist. And if, David, I guess I can work with you maybe after the fact to to yep. push some of this information out there. Mm -hmm. um, it's not ex it's not uber expensive, but man, you mitigate so much risk. But again, back to the suspenders and belt, right? Have a have an IT partner that that is that is laser focused on security. Find an IT partner that you trust that you can sleep at night knowing that your data isn't going to be sabotaged as likely as it would have been if you hadn't hired them. And find a cybersecurity insurance partner um, that can that you can sit down and walk you through the policies. We've got two or three that we work really closely closely with. I don't know if this is the right forum to 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 to, to say their names, but there's some really good ones here locally uh, that that understand cyber insurance, and I'm happy to pass along that information, you know, directly to anybody that asks for it. Yeah. So Dan uh, Debbie has a great question about. She, she says she uses an online software for food pantry clients. What should she ask uh, them to make sure they have security in place? And, and, and all of us use uh, vendors that we interface, interface with a lot. Of. That, that's a great question. What, what would you say to that? Yeah, I think so. That, that's a great question. And, and touching on you know, applications that, that all of us use on a daily basis to run our business. Yeah, I would just ask, was, was it Debbie? Yes. Yeah. Debbie, I would just ask them what what safety protocols do they have in place to protect you as a customer, right? I mean, we're all responsible for our own protection, right? We're all responsible for making sure that our companies, our businesses aren't sabotaged. But I don't I don't think there's any harm in asking your vendors and people that you pay an invoice to what they're doing to protect you because it matters, right? If they have a, a a weakness in their application 
that somehow a, a an attack comes through them? Well, I can think a lot of, of a lot of outcomes there. One, it interrupts your business continuity, right? And that's the primary impact. They have a threat of being sued by you, right? For letting that 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 um, that breach occur. So there's a lot of you know, open dialogue is is in my opinion necessary and best for all businesses and all vendors and all customers. And we do it here internally. You know, companies that we do business with, both where they're a customer of ours and businesses that we are customers of, we have those discussions. Have you had a cybersecurity risk assessment in the last year? Have you have you had your network scan for what might be already embedded? Of course we get you know, the big eye look like, why the hell are you asking me that? Um, but it matters because we have families that are relying on paychecks from Warren Technology, right? You know, you have constituents and you have stakeholders, Debbie, that are relying on you for business continuity. So, you know, I think proactive dialogue um, with everybody that touches your network and every application you use and everybody that somehow has 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 any access to your data or your network, it's a conversation worth having. They may not know, they probably don't know, but man, I would bring it up. I would wanna know that stuff. I would wanna know the last time that they protected me as a customer by having their network scanned or by having an analysis done of their operations. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, great. Um, another question, could you speak to encrypted emails such as ProtonMail? No. I cannot. <laughs> we have uh, we, gotta, we, we have we have technical resources who absolutely can speak to that, um, and engineers that know all about that stuff. But uh, no, I would be lying to you if I said yes. Okay, good answer. <laughs> um, so, what what would be the first step that you would tell any of these people watching today to do today? What could they, what's the first thing they would do? If I'm, if I'm going to be blunt, the first thing is know that you're, you are a target, right? Like internalize the fact that your business operations are a target for some bad guy out there in China or Russia who wants to, um, to sever that. That's the first thing. Just know that they are coming after you. I don't care if you have one employee or a hundred thousand, they are going to find a way to sever your business operations if you don't prevent it, if you're not being proactive about protecting yourself. That's the first thing. Be real about it. Can't bury your head in the sand, can't look the other way, can't think not me, can't think I'm too small. It just doesn't matter anymore. Everybody's a target. Every company and every business is a target. That's the first thing. The second thing is find a partner, right? Find a partner who you can talk to about the realities of data being compromised and business continuity being interrupted. Um, and even if you don't decide to hire them, have the discussions, right? We talked about like multi-factor authentication, you know, being a first key step. That's not hard to do. You may have an internal resource, you can set that up for you. But I think the first thing is to, to just internalize the threat and understand that, you know, all these examples that I give about these Fortune 100 companies, th those are the ones that end up in the public eye. Um, but just here in Louisville and just here in Kentucky, there are thousands of businesses that have been compromised just because they don't think the threat is real or they're not being proactive about protecting their people, their customers, and their data. Nice. Okay. And we love we love to be that partner for the companies that we work with, and you know this company has morphed in the last year, where a, a vast majority of what we're doing is security based. Um, that didn't that wasn't it wasn't that way five years ago because the threat wasn't as tangible and these these criminals weren't as smart and it was kind of you know out there but it was just theoretical. But now it's it's anybody and everybody, and our customers are coming to us saying, look, I, I watch the news. You know, I read business first, literally, if y'all can see this, literally in business first yesterday, there was an article and the headline is Louisville FBI leaders warn of cyber threats to businesses. Like every day now I get emails about, you know, sabotages and, and hacks and companies that are 
um, that should be doing more than they're doing to make sure that their continuity and their customers and employees aren't impacted and they're just not doing it yet. Right. And this has to flow into your personal life as well too, right? Absolutely. Absolutely it does. You know, look, I get a paycheck from my employer, right? We all, we all have employees that rely on us to feed their family. And I don't want to be, I don't want to be the one that, that, has to tell our employees, hey, we got hacked. Our data has been ransomware. We, they're not going to give it, give us, give it back to us if we don't pay them a million dollars. We can't do that. I'm sorry, we're locking the doors. I don't want to be that guy, right? And that absolutely, you know, infiltrates our personal lives and our and our you know ability to provide for our families. So, and again, those examples are tangible and real. Where companies are just shutting down. They're, they're, they can't afford because they don't have any proactive um, policies and procedures in place to figure this stuff out when they get hacked and they just can't afford to pick back up and get back to business or it's gonna take them six months or you know whatever. And you know I don't know about you, but I don't know a whole lot of companies that can that their employees can't afford to be paid you know, for six months you know, while yeah. they kind of figure everything out, right? So proactivity is the key. Right, wow. Uh, looks like that's everything. Uh, Jeff says he's constantly getting brute force attacks on his web ass assets. Uh, yep. Looks like that's it. Uh, so Dan and Bill, I really appreciate you guys sharing with us today. It's been awesome. Thank you. We, we appreciate the opportunity to kind of get up on the pulpit and continue preaching like we, like we do and, um, you know, anytime we can be an, an asset to anyone that's on this uh, this uh, uh, Zoom or to you all, you know, our doors are always open and our phone always rings. So please reach out to us, you know, if we can help. Yeah. And uh, later on today, we'll send everyone a recording of today's session as well as Dan's slides and their contact information. Um, Kevin on our staff has put a, a link in there for, for our um, cybersecurity workbook. If you want to click and download that, that's a pretty good little resource as well. So thanks for doing that, Kevin. And um, if you have any questions, additional questions, don't ask me. Don't a please ask Dan and, and Bill. They, they're the guys that, that have the answer. It's not me. So uh, <laughs> they're contacted. Just don't ask me about encrypted email. Otherwise, we're good. <laughs> okay. But, but, you know, but you know somebody with the answer. Right? I know a guy who knows a guy. Exactly right. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. And thanks, everyone, for joining us today. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank, Thank you for the forum. We appreciate it. Okay. All right. Have a good Wednesday, everyone.